Hello and welcome back to Scale Modelling Cafe and the final part which is the painting and weathering of the Clearprop H75N Hawk. As you can see I'm just painting the interior green over the clear parts first and the inside of the sliding part of the canopy I should have done the windscreen as well but I didn't. Bit of a faux pas. The national markings were all sprayed on this one, so the rudder had an undercoat ready for to be uh, masked off and the red and the blue to be applied. The fuselage band as well, that was applied first. And I tend to apply my white markings first rather than later, just because uh, I just find it easier if I'm honest. Roughly marked out where I wanted the national markings to go and then just using the calipers with the decal Just made sure it wasn't too small because that's going to be a right pain if it was This is MRP white. It's really thin really opaque and goes down a tree Now for the blue this was a mixed blue uh, based off Tamiya X8 and uh, I added a few drops of MRP Roundel Blue as well just to uh, desaturate the colour a little bit and try to match it to the decal as closely as possible. The advantage of spraying the markings on this sort of kit is, uh, is pretty obvious really. It's just to preserve all that beautifully fine surface detail and all those rivets. So with the white mast off we can go in with the blue on the wings. Relatively easy to uh, make your own masks for this. It's, uh, it's literally just rectangles of uh, tape but it's important though to get your measuring right and make sure everything's nice and even. And I'm just being a bit frugal here with the tape. And the other advantage of spraying the markings is you can fade as you go along. And uh, especially these sort of far eastern aeroplanes, they are going to weather uh, quite a bit. Now for the red, this is uh, MRP, just with a tiny bit of dark earth put in just to knock the brightness down. You can see there the blue's all been masked off, the white's all masked off. And we just go and apply the red. This is always fun, removing the masking. A decal is supplied, but it is too big for the rudder, actually. That's probably done on purpose, but spraying it is a relatively simple job. Just very carefully lining up the masks to mask off the red portion. Now, these are the masks from the white portion, so I know they're going to be exactly the right thickness and width. Just using a bit of tape on the outside there as a guide and then we're going to go in and with these strips of uh, masking tape just cover up the, uh, the white and the blue ready for the camouflage. Just various strips of various lengths and it's all covered up nicely. 
So I did use a little bit of Mr. Surfacer here just to um, get rid of all the overspray because I didn't want that to affect the camouflage colours. It would be easy for it to come through, a bit like pre-shading really. And uh, yeah, I didn't want to build up, having to build up the camouflage colour just to get rid of any of the sort of red and blue and white underneath. So the grey, this was MRP Light Ghost Grey and uh, it was lightened with a little bit of white in my usual sort of post shading pattern which is uh, very sort of tight cloudy bits and pieces a little bit of marbling here and there but not too much actually I just find marbling it's um, it just looks a bit weird if it's done all the way over the airframe so I just do a little bit of marbling here and there in some areas a little bit of sort of cloudy pattern here and there and also the lighter colour over some of the panel lines and hatches and things and it does a really good job of breaking things up. Just going over there, just highlighting some of the raised rib detail on the fabric areas. Now, always a fun moment. Off come the masks for the markings. And I think I got away with it really quite lightly. I was so pleased with how that turned out. There is some photo etch supplied in the kit for the um, sort of control horns and balances and things like that. So uh, I added them now just before the, the upper camouflage because I thought they would get knocked off at some point and I did actually lose one. And I thought that was getting away with it lightly, frankly. Now for the three-tone upper camouflage, starting with the light brown. Again, this was a complete mix. Uh, the base of it was MRP RLM 79. Had a bit of buff added, had a bit of the Southeast Asia tan added, just to warm things up a little bit. And my usual method, as, as with the underside really, is I just tint the base coat with some lighter tones, sometimes some darker tones. And I go back in and I just build up that, not a mottled effect, but where the different uh, paint tints alter the color just to break up the surface. Way better than pre-shading. And I've done a pre-shading video, so uh, maybe I'll stick that at the end of the video and uh, you can hear my thoughts on pre-shading. I do think post shading is much better. Right, um, <laughs> you might see all the way through the video, I do knock off the left aileron quite often. Um, I ended up gluing it in place in the end. Now for the darker brown, this was uh, again mixed all by eye. It's uh, a bit of whole red, a bit of red brown, a bit of dark earth. Um, yeah, all mixed by eye. And what I tend to do is I will remove the end cap from the airbrush. That way I can get a really nice tight spray pattern. I turn the air pressure right down and it's as low as it can be and still atomize correctly. Any more, if I turn it any, any further down, then it tends to splatter a little bit and speckle. So I just get to that stage and then turn it back up again and then I'm no minimum air pressure. And that way, going really close as you can see, you can get a really nice, tight, freehand edge. The airbrush is a custom Micron from Iwata. It's, uh, it's not cheap, but, you know, I think, uh, I think it's worth splashing out. Every now and again, for a decent tool, it's going to make your life easier and a lot less stressful. And the results speak for themselves. So I'm just very carefully going around uh, 
spraying the demarcation and then what I'll do is go back in I'll turn the air pressure up a little bit more for filling in all the areas and then again this paint will be tinted and I'll go in and post shade exactly the same method as I did on the underside just going in with some highlights and lowlights just breaking up the monochrome uh, color just creating that visual interest and what I tend to do is I tend to exaggerate it a bit because the subsequent uh, weathering stages are going to blend everything back in So here we are then with the um, air pressure cranked up just a little bit. I've got a um, Mac valve just on the bottom, so it's uh, it's very easy. And then just going in and building up a solid colour. And then what I'll do is, once this is done, I'll go and do the post shading after that. I'll do it over the solid base coat. I find that gives me more control over the post shading then. Not forgetting the front of the wheel spats, these were masked off with a combination of blue tack, well white tack really I suppose, strictly speaking, and tape. And now for the green, this was just various greens from the MRP range. I'm sorry I can't give you any exact ratios because I just did it by eye and uh, I just used various greens from my collection to choose something that I thought was... Uh, going to be fairly authentic. You can see there I've got the instructions. I'm just referring to that constantly, just making sure the shapes are correct and uh, just outlining it. I, uh, I really ought to really just draw it out in pencil first, but you know, I quite like this method. Just going in and just, just launching straight into it. So another important point is just to keep the airbrush, uh, airbrush, airbrush moving all the time, especially with a hot paint like MRP. If you let it sort of stagnate, then the paint that comes out, A, it will pull in the area and B, the thinner in the paint will actually clean it off because it's very hot lacquer. So just keep it moving, move it backwards and forwards. Um, and you can see there me now, uh, I've cranked up the air pressure a little bit and I'm just gonna go and fill everything in. And then I'll go back and I'll add uh, some various tones to go in and lighten and darken things up. The one thing I do use is yellow with a green. That way you keep it kind of richness. If you use white or gray, you just I'm just um, taking the end off there, um, just for a bit of touch up. If um, if you use white or grey, it tends to sort of fade it in a sort of chalky way, which um, which I don't like. Using a little bit of yellow to lighten up a green will um, will keep the colour sort of keep it greener and more vibrant. Okay, always a fun moment is removing the masking. So that was obviously the underside done, the tail band is done, and now the national markings come off. And you might be able to see just a very, very slight hint of white along the edge. It's easy enough just to put a bit of masking tape down and uh, clean things up. But I was really pleased with how that turned out, actually. I did use a few decals, though. This tail sort of lettering on the back. Decals are from Decograph and they are absolutely lovely. But as I said before, the riveting is so fine, 
I wanted to paint as many of the markings as I could. Using Ammo of Mig products, um, they really are they really are very good actually, the setting solutions. And just this kind of badge thing on the fuselage. That goes in and uh, as they were drying I did go over with the rivet wheel actually, the Galaxy rivet wheel, just to help push the decal into those very, very fine rivets. really do want that painted on look so um, it's worth doing that okay bit of a bit of a change of pace now onto the propeller it was sprayed in uh, Tamiya um, LP8 lacquer and then just a sanding sponge to get some of the uh, scratches on the rear of the blade and then this is uh, this is wonderful stuff actually this is the ammo dry brushing paint it's acrylic paint specifically formulated for dry brushing and it is amazing stuff can't recommend this highly enough and I just used this orangey rust tone on the leather headrest just to uh, indicate uh, indicate a little bit of wear this is the gunmetal color and I drilled out the gun barrels, they were solid, and then just used this dry brushing method just to bring out the detail. Now for a wash, and on riveted models such as this, I do like a sludge wash actually, but it's quite tricky with this three tone camouflage. Trying to get one tone that fits all is gonna be nigh impossible. So I actually mixed an individual tone for all the different colors including the national markings so obviously this is the green it needs to be quite a dark tone obviously for the contrast and by having a really thick wash such as this it won't run along with capillary action across into the other color and it's actually quite resilient so when it's dried off completely I uh, I'll, you'll see me in a minute. I'll potch it off with a bit of kitchen towel. Slightly darker brown for the tan colour. And you can see with this brush, I can be relatively precise. And I'll just brush it along the demarcation of the colour. And then I'll work it into the surface. It's still fairly glossy, the model, at this stage. Um, what you could do actually is do a satin varnish and then go and do this uh, this method and then it would be even more grippy but I actually wanted a relatively clean one this one so uh, I did it over the gloss so here I am polishing the paintwork just to remove the uh, the oil it's all dry and the secret here is not to scrub too hard and try not to smudge the colour over the boundary. It's quite tricky. But uh, yeah, just take your time. Go careful. And uh, and it'll work out a treat. I'm just trying to be very careful here around the tail because I don't want to knock any of that photo etch off. And actually you can see a cotton bud there, which is what I used to get into the nooks and crannies around the... Uh, around that photo etch. Just putting the aileron back on again. I just went in with this soft brush just to blend the oils uh, right up close to the photo etch. Even the pointy cotton bud wasn't really doing the trick. And uh, even using the finger there just to go in and uh, remove the oils from the high, from the high spots
and I'm hoping the camera is picking out the rivet detail that you can see. Everything needs to be sealed in now and this is my varnish of choice. It is VMS satin. You can see it's a very wet coat, sprayed at a very high air pressure because it is quite gloopy. But spray it on in a wet coat and just let it dry. Let the varnish do the work. Now it is quite soft this stuff so I do leave it for quite a while before going back in again. If you go in too early and you're too harsh you will rub it off but you can see there what a lovely sort of smooth matte but with a bit of a sheen finish you get with this stuff. It's great. Now for the oils. So you can see all the different tones of oil pressure I'm going to use. And I use a bit of thought here. It's not completely random. I, uh, the tones I use are very deliberate. And you can see there I've got darker grimy tones along the sort of joints, nooks and crannies, things like that. It's going to help the detail pop and also give that illusion of dirt and grime. And the underside of World War II airplanes tend to get pretty manky actually. And uh, using the oils you can really control the effect. So this is just an old soft brush I'm using for blending here. You can see in that bottle cap is some thinner if I need it. And then when I finished, I just hit it with a hairdryer just so it all flashes off. And you can go back in. Uh, so here I am going back in around the central portion, around the sort of keel. And that's a sort of real sort of dirty, grimy tone. And I'm going to just blend that in. And you can see what a sort of grimy effect you get using those oils. It's fabulous, really. But I did it on the top as well. So uh, this is sort of a earthy brown colour. Just going in along some of these sort of panel lines along the wing roots, things like that. Just to help pop out the detail increase the grime and uh, yeah I really do like the effect now to put the rudder on I did drill and pin this just for extra strength really I tend to do that with rudders lining up the holes and it just pushes in might be able to see a little bit of photo etch on there as well and that was touched in with a paintbrush and it just slots in nicely Now we're getting quite close to the end. I used a silver pencil here and I quite often will use uh, the hairspray method. You may have seen a silver wing root right at the beginning of the painting stage. I didn't mention it because uh, I didn't actually use hairspray on this in the end. I didn't want too much chipping on this one. So using a tapping motion with this uh, silver pencil thing, I just go in and just slowly build up the effect. It's really controllable, but you do need to seal it in with a little bit of varnish because with handling it, it can rub off. I can see it's actually quite subtle. But I did want a few more sort of scratches and chips. So it was back out with the sponge and this is ammo steel color, which I think is brilliant for this sort of thing. And post shading, it's, uh, it's great using the oils, but I tend to use a layered effect, different techniques. And uh, just using this sort of dirty brown color it, uh, it's a really good colour, you just get in the nooks and crannies and you can just go over the oils and just accentuate things even more and build up that grime. I also used a similar tone for the exhaust stain underneath. So you're just going over some of the panel lines there, really good grimy effect. 
and there is the exhaust stains. And even with the exhaust stain colour, just, uh, just highlighting the really dirty, grimy bits. And we're pretty much at the end of the project now, so uh, all I need to do is just remove the masks, add a few of the little final details, and put everything together, and the project is finished. This is an absolute superb model from Clearprop. I did have a few little uh, construction issues, all my own making, mainly because I mounted the engine at a slight angle, which caused me a bit of a, a faff. But uh, yeah, I love this model to bits. It's one of my favorite in my collections and uh, I can't sort of recommend Clearprop highly enough. It's a fabulous model and uh, I can't wait to uh, make another Clearprop model. So I'll leave you with some pictures and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers, bye bye.